if you talk Let's I don't have questions. Let me get this out of the way real quick. Firstly, it's still a good diss track. Overrated doesn't equate to bad. Secondly, I'm comparing it to not only diss tracks by other rappers, but also Tupac's other diss tracks. A lot of people seem to forget or be completely unaware of the fact that he has several of them, and I'll be going over some of them in this video. The infamous Tupac vs Biggie beef that spawned Hit Him Up was labeled by many media outlets as a beef between the East Coast and the West Coast. That wouldn't exactly be true, however, and in my Tim Dog vs Compton video, I went into more detail on the East Coast vs West Coast, so watch it after this if you haven't seen it yet. Tupac had plenty of love for people from New York. That was his birthplace, after all. Hit Em Up was initially released as the B-side to the hit single, How Do You Want It? And then released on the album, Death Row Greatest Hits, as well as Tupac's Greatest Hits album, released in 96 and 98, respectively. Hit Em Up was full of some pretty vicious and violent lines, like the scandalous intro line claiming relations with Faith Evans, Biggie's wife at the time. Right? And now, like, and now Faith Evans, I don't know if they still together or not. Um, she was Stevie J, who works with, um, like, who, who, who used to work with, like, 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 with Bad Boy, my fault, my fault. Stevie J used to work with, like, Diddy and, you know, Biggie, he used to be in, he, he used to be in the, he used to be in, in the music industry, you were. Down to the outro, having an over a minute long tirade of Tupac violating everyone from Mob Deep with the notorious line about sickle cell anemia, which was of course aimed at Prodigy, who years later succumbed to the disease, to the notorious line about his fofo make a show older kids don't grow. It's ambitious, I'll give you that. However, one of the few criticisms Tupac really violated him. He violated him in that song. He didn't care. That is common from people is that the song is brought down because of his group, the Outlaws, being on it, who don't match his level of rap ability or intensity on the track. That might be a fair critique. Tupac is the general and they are the soldiers, as EDI means said on Bomb First, another diss track by Tupac released some months later. Personally, I don't think they did bad on the track at all. However, one of the things that I look for in a diss track, besides the usual things that you would expect from any song like good production, lyrical content, and subject matter, are hard hitting bars that are the truth. Even better if it's new information to listeners. You know how like in a job interview, they're asking you to be specific about a situation? I'll give examples from some other classic diss tracks. The Ice Cube track No Vaseline is one. Outside of all those lines calling his former groupmates fudge packers and all that, he had plenty of truths spread throughout the song, and even the former was a metaphor for the fact that their manager Jerry Heller was ripping him off. The reason Ice Cube left the group was because of Jerry being funny with the money, which would also be the same reason Arabian Prince left before him and Dr. Dre left after him, essentially breaking up the group. Some people might have known why he left the group, but with no Vaseline, he laid it out for the public to see or hear in this case. Speaking the truth on this track, also got Ice Cube hit with an anti-Semitic label, but that's another story. Another example is the much more recent Sheether by Remy Ma aimed at Nicki Minaj. A several minute long lyrical dismantling of the black Barbie- Nah, I ain't gonna lie, Remy violated Nicki in that song, bro. If you haven't heard it, go, go check it out, bro. It was fire, bro. Like, did the Nas beat. Towards Nikki. Rap features Remy spitting a lot of truth. From speaking on Nikki's cosmetic surgery to the lines about her brother Jelani and so on. One more example being Gucci Mane's truth aimed at Jeezy. I just had to mention this one since it's literally in the song title. The references the Pookie Lok say it all. Gucci shot and killed him in self defense. No need for a fictional act of violence when you have a highly publicized and hard hitting one right there for the picking. Hit him up was pretty devoid of hard hitting truthful lines outside of the aforementioned intro line about Faith or the outro where Sickle Cell was mentioned, and that's assuming that Tupac really did have sex with Faith Evans. It's full of threats aimed at a whole lot of people, namely from New York City. You could say it was more braggadocious and fictional. Not to say that Tupac would or wouldn't follow through with anything he rapped about, but there wasn't much truth spit on the track itself. It was full of emotion and passion, which is a large part of what makes a track so visceral and widely loved. Another thing that makes diss tracks great are the personal ones. Example? Another one of my favorite diss tracks. Easy e with real mother effing G's. 
dissing Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. Throughout Easy Versus, he gets real personal with Dre, dissing him for beating up women, portraying the role of a gangster, and how Easy got paid for Dre's record sales on Death Row Records due to contractual agreements. Yeah, we all know Easy wasn't known for writing and that Dre still wrote his verses, but Easy was still the one who had all the personal information about Dre, given how close they were before Dre left NWA and used it to formulate a classic diss track. Again, another more recent example? Mace's Oracle track aimed at former groupmate and friend Cameron. Mace got real up close and personal with Cam on that track. Throughout the long single verse, Mace lets out his grievances with Cameron and airs him out for various situations and Yo, who do how do y'all feel about Cam like wearing like pink like you know pink fits bro like how do y'all feel about that? Me me personally, I never wear like like pink like pink fits. Like I never wear pink feet, pink shirts, pink pants, pink socks, all that bro. How do y'all feel about that? How y'all feel about like you know like you know, guys wearing like pink, pink stuff, you know? Let me know. Let me know how y'all feel. He puts that mirror up to Cam to show him who he really is. Lines like, damn Cam, I thought more of you. But when I think about it, that's really all you do. You're really not that fly. You're really not that guy. You're really not that wise. I'm really not surprised. Has me sounding like an old friend who is sorely disappointed in the way Cam turned out. Relating back to hit him up. Pac and Biggie also had a personal relationship, though not very long as they had allegedly met back in 1993 and the quad shooting happened in 94. Not much personal was said in the track about the people he took aim at, minus the Faith Evans line once again. Another trait I like to see is passion, and that is where Hit'em Up truly shines. However, this is something that Tupac generally had, as said by many people in his circle around that time and even before the whole beef occurred. The producer of the track, Johnny J, even stated that he has never seen Tupac that angry before and never wanted to work on a track like that again because of how intense it was. So clearly, Pac took it to the next level on that one. I used some examples from other artists, but now I'm going to flip it and go to some of Tupac's other diss tracks like I mentioned earlier. First off, let's take a look at Holla At Me, which was featured on the All Eyes On Me album. For some reason, this track seems to really get overlooked despite being one of the best tracks on the album and one of my favorite tracks I am. Holla At Me is considered a diss track to Stretch, Biggie, and Ayana Jackson, with them being referenced in that order. However, some feel that Biggie was not indeed addressed on the track, and it's just Stretch and Ayana. Besides being the only track on the album produced by DJ Bobcat, it's also one of the best beats on the album to me, but the song truly shines with those traits that I've mentioned prior. Throughout the track, you definitely feel his passion, and with lines like, When me and you was homies, no one informed me it was all a scheme, you infiltrated my team and sold a nigga dreams. Ain't that stretch? You can easily hear the personal touch. The pain of betrayal and relatability is clear. Later on in the third verse, where he addresses his rape accuser Ayana, he has the lines, So many brothers framed in this dirty game. Oh, that's the, that's the trick that um, accused Shubak of, of, of raping her. Damn. Allegedly raping all like that. It's a shame. So much pressure on my brain. Why she blame me? Secrets in the dark, only her and I know. Now I'm sitting in the state pen doing time slow. Spitting the cold hard fact that he was doing time for a crime that he didn't even commit. Now some might not consider this a diss track necessarily since he's essentially speaking his piece on situations that happen between himself and these individuals, but hey. I sure see it as one, especially considering this led up to him dissing several others much more harshly with Hit'em Up and other tracks shortly afterwards. This song was recorded back in 1995 when he was bailed out by Suge Knight and predates the other disses. The rest were recorded in 1996, shortly before his death. Speaking of the other disses, fast forward to his next album, Seven Day Theory, released shortly after his death and under his Machiavelli alias. This album starts off with the track Bomb First, My Second Reply, easily another one of my favorite diss tracks by Tupac, once again aimed at the usual suspects, New York rappers. The intro on it is great and it even has producer credits by Tupac, marking his crossover into production as well. If Bomb First is the second reply, it's probably safe to say that Hit Him Up was the first, or even Holla at me. Although it might not have gotten much recognition, Bomb First is another overall great track by Tupac. Maybe this one doesn't get the love of Hit'em Up because of the comparatively more toned down nature of the track. 
Throughout Pac's verse on Bombfirst, he takes an approach full of bravado, quite literally reintroducing himself to us all with the first lines, allow me to introduce first Machiavelli to Don hysterical spiritual lyrics like the Holy Quran, positioning himself as a lyricist and leader of a higher caliber than his enemies. Later in his verse, he mentioned Jay-Z and Mob Deep by name, in case by the intro you can't tell that it was yet another diss track to New York rappers at the time. EDI Mean and newcomers of the group Young Noble have the second and third verses respectively, with EDI going at Exhibit oddly enough, and Noble going at Biggie. Once again, another good diss track that is underrated. However, the album ends with the song Against All Odds. If Hit Em Up was that punch coming out the gate with its shock value, Against All Odds is a knockout blow to all of his opponents. From the very beginning of the track, he let it be known that this is the war song. From rappers like Nas, Biggie, and Mob Deep, he let his intentions be known. Perhaps most surprising is the second verse, however, and this is where that whole truth thing once again comes into play. One of my favorite Tupac verses of all time. I heard he was light-skinned, stocky with a Haitian accent, jewelry, fast cars, and he's known for flashing. Listen while I take you back and lace this rap, a real live tale about a snitch named Haitian Jet. Louis working for the Fed, same crime, different trials, nigga, picture what he said. And did I mention, promise to pay back Jimmy Henshin in due time, I know you bitch niggas is listening, the world's mine. Such a spine-tingling verse. He not only mentioned Haitian Jack, but Jimmy Henchman as well. Those two aren't rappers or anything of the sort. They're known for allegedly being the ones behind the shooting at Quad Studios, as well as the rape allegations that same year. Whether the allegations against them are true or false, one thing is confirmed at the very least, and that's that they weren't people to be messed with in the streets. Up until that point, how many rappers are really calling out street dudes in their rhymes, especially in a derogatory manner? Another rapper that comes to mind with that mentality is 50 Cent, who did Supreme from the Supreme Team years later, along with Ja Rule and Murder Inc. on several Back Down. That was the most famous um diss track. 50 Cent got like like you know, he got more diss tracks. He has mad diss tracks towards Ja Rule and Supreme and shit. But the back down one was the was the more, I feel like the back down was the most famous one. Diss tracks. Personally, Against All Odds is my favorite Tupac diss track and one of my favorite Pac songs in general. The sheer passion and truth being unveiled in the track alone makes it a contender for one of the best diss tracks of all time for me, right up there with tracks like No Vaseline and Ether. However, it doesn't get talked about nearly as much. This next one might not be a Tupac track, but he was still on the song. New York 87 by the Dog Pound featuring DJ Quick, Deadly Threat, and Tupac. This track was in response to the Dog Pound's trailer getting shot up when they were filming the video for the song New York, New York. Biggie was on the radio talking about them shooting the video, so they felt that Biggie was the one that incited it, hence the beef with them being on. Overall, the whole East Coast vs West Coast thing brought upon some great diss tracks and some tense moments. Tupac's Hit'em Up is considered by many to be the standout. But I guess the point is to look a little deeper, and you can find some underrated gems. Once again, it ain't bad, but there's so much more to Tupac diss tracks than just hit him up. Tupac was an eclectic and prolific figure in hip hop and branched outside of it to acting, and is someone that is surely missed. He's one of my favorite rappers of all time without a doubt. Let this video be one of those reminders of his legacy. Now, as always, subscribe to the channel. Okay, um. That's the vid, um, that's the vid, um, so let me know what y'all think, bro, do y'all, do y'all agree with him, like, when he said, like, Tupac hit him up, um, song was, wasn't, um, wasn't the, um, best diss track, or do y'all disagree, and if y'all disagree, um, let me know, bro, why, why y'all, why you think it's the best diss track, and comment what is what is what is the best diss track in your opinion, bro? Comment comment down below. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Y'all know the vibes. We're just checking out you are.